In Proverbs 23, 13, there's something about the knowledge of wisdom. The knowledge of wisdom. Remember, we are here to finish what we started last Sunday. We could not finish in the interest of time. And uh, we thank God for the pathways to financial restoration. The thing that we've been covering since the beginning of the year. You remember the pathways? Yes. Do you remember them? Number one pathway. Number one pathway. According to the story, the story uh, of Peter and company. So number one, we say to enjoy financial restoration, we be cognizant of the seasons. And then pathway number two, surrender or yield totally to God's plans and purposes. You remember? And then number three, what did we say? Launch into the deep. So today, we are finishing. We are finishing by taking a look at the story of Job, the thing we started last Sunday. Remember, in, uh, in, uh, in the book of Romans, it is written, Romans 15, 4. Give me that before we go to, to 24, 13. 24, 13, not 23, 13. 24, 13. You give me 24, 13 after Romans 15, 4. So these things are written. So the story of Job is a template of super restoration. So hear me, they are written for our learning. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So we, the story of Job is a story of super, apart from the resurrection of Jesus. I don't think there is another story of super restoration in the Bible, more than the story of Job. Of course, the resurrection of Jesus is the biggest because we are here because he's resurrected. That's why in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, if there, then there is no resurrection, then our faith is in vain. So hear me, apart from the resurrection story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the story of Job is a story of super restoration. And anybody who goes through calamity, anybody who goes through losses, as long as you are able to, by the help of the Spirit, to connect to the story of Job, you cannot suffer calamity for long when you get connected to the story of Job. It is a story of how a man can fall from grace to grass, but finally to super grace. So it doesn't matter what you have lost. It doesn't matter where, how far deep you have gone. God who restored Job is going to restore you tonight. In, 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 in Proverbs 24, 13, the Bible says something that is very key concerning the word. My son, eat thou honey. We are here to eat honey. My son, eat thou honey because it is good. And remember, honey is a type of the, of the word of God. The word of God can be in milk form. It can be in, uh, in meat form. It, it can also be in honey form. My son, eat thou honey. Just like the prophet, prophet Ezekiel, was made to eat the scroll. And he said, in my belly, it was as sweet as honey. Amen. All as honeycomb. My son, eat thou honey because it is good. We are eating the word because it is good. Amen. Oh God, your amen is looking for my trouble. We are look, eating the word because it is good. Amen. So if they are, and remember in our church we don't read the word. We feast on the word. We eat the word. There's a difference between reading and feasting. We eat it. We eat it. And why do we eat it? Because it is good. My son, eat thou honey. Because it is good. And the honey cup, which is sweet to thy taste. Then what happens after you've eaten the honey, which is the word, and the honey cup, which is sweet to the taste? So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. As you continue hearing the word of God, wisdom, which is practical knowledge of the word of God, is coming your way. And you know, wisdom is better than the weapons of war. Show me a man of wisdom, and I'll show you a man or a woman who will be out of trouble any time, any day. Receive wisdom. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then what shall happen? Then there shall be a reward. 
then there shall be a reward. Any word you read, any word you eat comes with a reward. And what is the reward? Financial restoration. Then thou hast found it. Then, then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. And thy expectation. What are you expecting? Financial restoration. What are you expecting? Financial restoration. So we looked at, at the story of Job. Uh, and we were looking at five secret codes from Job of old. Five secret codes towards financial restoration. Five secret codes. To, number one, we said that you must retain your covenant walk. He retained his covenant walk and talk with God. He did not deviate. He did not stagger. You know, there were so many temptations for him to do that. But, uh, you know, even the wife told him at one point in Job chapter 2, verse 9, there are about eight, 6, 7, 8, 9, about Job 2, uh, 4 to 9, there are about. Even the wife told him, Cast this God and die. But he said, Why do you speak like a foolish woman? Shall we expect only good things from the Lord? I, I, I was saying the other day, life is not a constant high. Life, life should have some moments of down. That's why he told, shall we expect, he told the wife, shall we expect only good things from the Lord? He said, I'm ready for anything. And then in Job 13, 11 to 15, show us there. Job 13, 11 to 15, he said something that was very key to show that he retained his covenant work. To show that he retained his covenant work with the Lord. Shall not his excellency make you afraid and his dread fall upon you? 12, 13, 14, 15. Your remembrances are like unto ashes. Your bodies to bodies of clay. Hold your peace. Let me alone. This job speaking to his friends. That I may speak and let come on me what will. Amen. He said, wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? He said, there is a, someone who takes care of my life. I'm not taking my life into my hands. He said, then he continues to say something that echoes down the, the corridors of time. He says, though he slay me, though he slay me, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but will maintain my but I will maintain my own ways before him. I will continue walking with him. I will not backslide. I'm not looking behind. Amen. So no matter, I, I, I beseech you by the masses of God. I am praying for you that the enemy will not attack you. But just in case something goes wrong in your life, do not look back. Do not turn back like, uh, you know, Lord's wife. Because when you maintain your covenant walk, when you retain that talk and walk with God, finally, you'll sing a new song. Amen. Number two code, we said, you cling to worship. He clung to worship. So, you cling to worship. The man was a worshiper. The man was a worshiper. And no, nothing could stop him from uh, worshiping. And, you know, worship ushers you into manifest presence into the glory of God, worship, show me our, and remember thanksgiving, in thanksgiving, you acknowledge the doings of the Lord. In praise, you affirm the doings of the Lord, but in worship, you affirm the person of God. There's a difference between thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Worship is the ultimate worship. So cling to your worship no matter what. No matter, that's, why, that's why he says in Job 35.10 that they did not call upon the Lord God who gives the night songs in the night. Job 35.10, he said that you did not call upon God. 35.10, he says, but none said, where is God my maker who giveth songs in the night? Job continued being a worshiper. God, con Job continued being a worshiper. So no matter what you go through, make sure that you are always a worshiper. Nita kuhimidi kila wakati sifazako zikinywa ni mwangu. Sayo unaiba na mna hiyo, watoto wamefukuzwa shule wiki tatu. Sayo unaiba na mna hiyo, kuna kufuri kubwa jua kufuri yako. Ya lad lord. But you can still worship him. May you enter into that dimension. I say may you enter into that dimension. So hear me. He, he clung to worship. That's why in Job 19, 23 to 27, he says something very key. He says something very key. 19, 23 to 27. Thank you. 9, 23 to 27. Oh, All that my words were, not writ were now written. All oh, that they were printed in a book. He says that they were graven with an iron pen. And led in the rock forever. 
For I know that my Redeemer live. For I know that my Redeemer live. What is that? Worship. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. 26, 27. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see. God. And then 27, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. The man was a worshiper. May you become an addicted worshiper. And by your worship, may you enjoy financial restoration. So not looking, if you want to be a worshiper, do not be a need-based need Christian. Need-based Christians cannot worship God. Because their needs are always pressurizing them. Need-based Christianity is Christianity that cannot touch worship. But when you are God-centered believer, you are worship-centered believer, you will worship him no matter what you are going through. No matter. You could be jobless, yet you are still a worshiper. You could be divorced and separated from your family and married, but yet you are a worshiper. May you come to that level. I say may you decide from today that no matter my circumstances, I will retain my worship. Then number three, this is a new one for today. Hold on to hope. Hold on to hope. Cling to hope. Hold on. The Bible in several instances tells us what to hold on to. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21, the Bible says, prove all things. Prove all things, but hold on to that which is good. Prove all things, but hold on to that which is good. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So hear me, hold on. Patient, hope is good, so hold on hope. Amen. Do not, there are two things that when the enemy manages to put in your life, he takes a holiday. He'll only be coming to check how far you have destroyed us. Impatience and discouragement impatience and discouragement so refuse to be discouraged look for encouragement from the bible from the church from anybody from any quarter where you can get it from but by all means maintain hope Amen. we say there are three great virtues there are three great virtues in the bible three greatest that were written by apostle paul in first corinthians 13 31 when he was talking about charity and love the 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 the, 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 page, the chapter on love 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 is not self-seeking love is forgiving you know you know the chapter he said though you prophesy and speak with tongues of men and angels that yet you have no love you are nothing so but towards the end in that one he says these are the three great virtues he said, number one, faith. And then number two, he talks about hope. And then number three, he talks about love. Amen. And I mentioned that before here. And we said, what does hope do? Hope does not make things easy, but it makes things possible. Hope, no, no, sorry, faith. Faith does not make things easy. Faith does not make things easy. But what does it do? It makes things possible. Make things work. Do you understand? Then, from faith, we talk about hope. What does it make, do? It makes all things work. Hope makes all things work. So hear me, hold on like job and to, and, and to hope. Do not lose the grip of hope. Keep on hoping, even against hope. Abraham was a man who kept on hoping, even against hope. You know, he was aged, the wife was aged, but he kept on remembering the promise of the Lord that you who shall be a heir of your house shall be a man, a son from your own loins. And as he kept on hoping, even against hope, finally Isaac was born. I came to declare to you by the word of God, anything you are hoping for, let it be manifested this year. I declare your hope shall not be cut off. Take your seat and say, I hope. And I believe. I believe. So the enemy knows how to attack our hope. That's why when you're going through temptations, there are people you should not come near. Especially those who don't know how to ignite hope in you. Yes. We have one of our daughters, the son, I think of two years. Telvin could be two years. Is it two years? He has been in ICU. But we thank God because this morning he was removed from ICU. Now he has been taken to the world. And I, I told, I told faith, hope on to, I told faith, hope, hope, hold on to hope. No wonder her name is faith. Amen. So the boy now is breathing on his own. Amen. 
And when this morning Faith entered uh, uh, that hospital, they told her, you have a champion. Amen. The boy is out of ICU. Amen. He shall not die but live. Amen. He, shall be, he shall be among the young men Amen. that shall serve God in our church. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Keep on hoping. Amen. Keep on hoping. Hope makes all things work. You understand? So job held. Look, look, look at, at look at that 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 job 14, 7 to 13. Job 14. Remember, we are talking about the five secret codes of financial restoration, gleaning our lessons from the story of job of old. For there is hope of a tree. You know, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again. There is hope of a tree. Do you see how it begins? There is hope of a tree, even if it is cut down. That it will sprout again. And how shall it sprout again? And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. There is hope for a tree. And do you know we are the trees of righteousness? There is hope for you. According to this word of God, there is hope for you. Even if you are cut down. They cut you down from your business. They cut you down from your working place. What I want you to know is that there is hope for you. And not only hope for us as individuals, there is hope for the nation of Kenya. Amen. What you are going through is temporary. <laughs> Hear me, every calamity has an expiry date. If it is started one day, it is ending one day. So hear me, if there is hope for a tree, of a tree, if it is cut down, it shall sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Verse 8, remember Job held on hope. Though the root thereof works old in the earth, though the root may wax old in the earth, you, you have been sad, the clothes that you are, you are wearing have grown old. You have even turned the collar of your shirt. Do you know how they turn? Yes. We used to turn no. You used to touch so that because the outer part is not as torn as the one that touches the neck. So you turn and then you appear like it's a new shirt. Amen. Amen. Even if the root thereof was old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the crown, what shall happen? Yet, through the scent of water, and remember water is the word of God. Through the smell of water, it will burn and it will bring boughs like a plant. So it will behave like a plant. You behave like a millionaire. Amen. Do you think you finish your story like this? No. no, your story, remember you are the superhero in the movie of your life. Amen. Remember, and I never saw when I, as a young man, nowadays I don't watch those things because they take a lot of time. But as a young boy, I remember even watching factual film. Yes. And I know Minister John Waero used to go by fire, by force. Yes. At our Magana shopping center, Nyeri. Amen. By fire, by force. One time my grandma tried to stop me. I ran through the window. And I left it open. So I went, finished. And because I knew there was no supper for me, I bought half loaf. And then I came back. back. But by the time I was waking up in the morning, she was waiting. <laughs> Where did you go last night? <laughs> but the thing is, you know the movies that I watch, the superheroes don't die. Do you know your life is a movie? Yes. And you are the super character. Amen. You are the key character. You can, do you know? Did, did you, you used to watch it where, where Rambo fight, fight, a big, a big, a big enemy like this. And finally he's almost overtaken. But somebody comes and shoots the enemy. And then the, the movie would end with Rambo being carried away in a helicopter. <laughs> that is the rapture. <laughs> the story of our lives will end very well. Amen. Say hallelujah. Say, so I, I refuse to be discouraged. Amen. Amen. You are the superhero. Amen. By the way, me, I'm watching my movie unfold. Amen. And I want to see how it will end. There's a time I call myself into a meeting and say, by the way, how, how far, how, how is the movie doing? How is the movie doing? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, your movie, your movie. could have made you jobless now. Jobless. But you will not end like this. You know, in the movie, the character, the main character gets into joblessness. Sometimes he's admitted in hospital. It is a movie. Amen. It is a movie. It is a movie. So hold on to hope because you shall not finish the way you started. So in Job 14, 
7, 8, 9. The, verse 9 says, Yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth boughs like a, like a plant. And then, then 10, 11 to 13, to 13, 11 to 13. But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Uh -huh. As the waters fell from the sea and the flood decayed and dried up, uh -huh. so man lieth down and lieth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Verse 13, he says, Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave, that thou would keep me, seek, would keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. He knew God was going to appoint him a set time and remember him. A set time. May God appoint for you a set time and remember you. So he held on to hope. He held on. So there are so many things. In 2 Timothy 1.13, there's something else to hold on. Apart from faith, apart from hope, there is the sound words. You hold on to sound words. 2 Timothy 1 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. There are things you cling on. No matter what is happening. Like a good family. Do you know a family is nothing to let go easily? Family. You fight until the end. You don't release your family like this just because there is one woman who gave birth to your wife. And she's against your union. You don't, you fight to the end. That, you know, salvation again. Yes. You don't let it go like this. Amen. Because how shall you escape if you despise this great salvation? Mm. That was first spoken about by our fathers and the prophets. There are things you don't let go. You hold fast. Amen. You hold fast. A good church, Amen. you don't let it go. Amen. You, even if you mess. You, the righteous man shall fall seven times, but finally shall rise up. Amen. You don't let go of a good church. A church where you came and you started seeing God, then because of one small mistake you made, or one offense, or because somebody borrowed you 10,000 and is not paying back, and Bishop does not even pay, no, doesn't even know that you are not paid. You, you swing your skirt and say, that church is full of robbers. It is a lie. Don't let it go. Yes. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, also a good friend. Also a good friend. A good friend, you don't let them go. You hold tight to good things. Hold tight to good things. Miki tumzuri si I can't. So hear me. Job held on to hope. And for you to enjoy financial restoration, you must hold on also to that hope. Keep on hoping. Avoid discouragement. Refuse to be discouraged. The work of the enemy day and night is to discourage you. That he's on a mission to discourage you. But rise up every morning with a song in your mouth. Amen. And don't look at the circumstances. Amen. You know, the word circumstance comes from a Latin word. The circle in which you are standing. Circumstance. Circumstance. So step out of that circle. Amen. Don't look at what surrounds you. Because if you walk by sight and not by faith, you'll always be discouraged. If you walk by sight and not by faith, you'll always be discouraged. I came to declare that devil of discouragement is dead and buried forever. Amen. I say it is dead and buried forever. Amen. Receive your hope in Christ. Amen. I say receive your hope in Christ. Amen. Hope of a better tomorrow. Amen. Hope of financial restoration. Amen. Hope of a better family. Amen. Hope of healing in your body. Amen. Take your seat and say I refuse to give up hope. Don't give up hope. Don't give up. Sorry. And now by that faith, hope and love. These three. But the greatest of this is love. So hear me. Hope and faith makes all things possible. Amen. Hope makes all things work. And love makes all things beautiful. That's why when you love someone, you don't see any mistake in them. When you love a church, you cannot be offended. When you love a nation like Kenya, because me, I love Kenya. Yes. You cannot run away like a refugee yes. because of small, small locust. Yes. <laughs> and I hear there's a part in Kenya where they are waiting for them eagerly to turn them into stew. <laughs> 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 Ooh, they are saying, locust, come, come, baby, come, come, baby. Come. <laughs> 
to turn them into stew. Did I mention that part? No, I don't want to be crucified. Because some of you, probably you can. Maybe as you are speaking, some of you have already eaten. <laughs> it is not that you are waiting. You are wondering. Bishop, you are saying waiting. And you have been feasting on it. <laughs> are they edible? They are edible? Okay. The way you are saying yes. <laughs> the way you are saying yes. You are acting like suspects. Hmm? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, your S is very yes. yes, very yes. <laughs> the way you are saying yes in one unison. I fear, I fear, I fear who came to this service today. Amen. So hear me. So faith, hope, and love. Hold on to hope. Number four, secret code, is that he waited patiently. So for you, wait patiently. Amen. Wait there's a difference between waiting and waiting patiently. Some people wait, but they're impatient. Do you know impatience? So I told you, I told you, in, impatience and discouragement are two major weapons that if the enemy manages to sow, to plant them into your life, he takes a holiday. He'll only be coming occasionally, you know, seasonally, to check how far you've destroyed yourself with those two. So hear me. Impatience costed the man, the first king of Israel, called Saul. It costed him the kingdom. Because, hear me, they had fought the Philistines and overcome. But le le let's look at it. In 1 Samuel 13, 5 to 14, they had fought, but uh, when they went to Gilgal, he could not wait for the priest to arrive, for the prophet, the man of God to come. First Samuel 13, 5 to 14. The Bible says, and the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. Anybody gathered together to fight your family and your life, let them scatter by thunder. They're called evil gathering. Together to fight Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. These were too many compared to what Saul had. And people as the sun which is on the seashore in the multitude, in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mitch Marsh eastward from Bethaven. When the men of Israel saw that, they were in a strait, for the people were distressed. Then, the people did hide themselves in caves and thickets, and in rocks, and in high places, and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of God and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And, the, and he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. What happened? And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and a peace offerings, and he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. Do you see impatience? He has stepped into a priestly into a priestly office, which was actually a blasphemy. Because a king was not supposed to offer sacrifice in Israel. Impatience will make you do things that you're not supposed to do. It will make you create breaches in your life. Do blunders that you may never recover until you die. I came to declare patience in your heart. I declare patience in your heart. So hear me. So we continue. The Bible says, and it came to pass that as soon as he had to salute him, verse 11, and Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and thou camest not within the days appointed. He became impatient. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mitch Marsh. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore. So you see, he knows it was wrong. I forced myself there. So impatience, you force you to do things that you do, they are wrong. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. Especially in the area of marriage. Especially in the area of marriage. Many people are forcing themselves to accept, to accept men and women that are not even born again. On Sunday 15th, the, by the grace of God, we shall gather here all the singers 
from 25 on upwards. We shall gather here the divorcees, the separated, the single mothers. And we shall talk deep about these things. Don't force yourself. Because you are looking at... God is not moved by the, the chronological calendar. Simply because you are 29 and you think it's too late. It's simply because you are 34. You agree to be married by one stupid drunkard. Who will even stop you from coming to church. In the name of love and marriage. I say you are delivered. Amen. Don't force yourself. Wait patiently. Who knows? And most of the times, when people, when people do blunders because of impatience, God is always around the corner. Samuel was not far. Yes. The Bible says immediately he finished, Samuel appeared. Yes. Because it is a temptation of the enemy. Anyone here who is just about to make a blunder yes. of impatience, yes. I declare God's mercy on you. Yes. And someone said unto him, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would, like, would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. God would have done that. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord had sought him, a man after his own heart. Do you know that man? Yes. What is the name of that man? Yes. And the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Impatience can cost you your life. Impatience can cost you your marriage. That's why I, one of the virtues I hold dearly to me, even in ministry, is patience. I remember God told me something. You know me, I came from a, a career into ministry. I had not even gone through, apart from personal study of the Bible and of course theological books, because by the grace of God and uh, to the glory of his name, I'm studious. I had not gone to the Bible school by to, to that time, by the time I opened, we opened the church. But uh, when I went to pray, and I was wondering, God, how will this church, what shape and color will it take? God told me, be patient. And he told me, be patient and consistent. Do it long enough strong enough and he told me even a fool if he does something long enough and strong enough he'll finally make it you know me you say father, father teach my heart teach my train my mind train my in the ways of patience way. teach my heart train my mind in the ways of for a minute even those watching me on ctn father teach my heart train my mind in the ways of patience in the ways of patience in the ways of patience Teach my hand, train my mind in the ways of patience. Train my mind in the ways of patience. Amen. It is commonly said that patience pays. Patience does what? The man called Job was so patient. He was so patient. No wonder he enjoyed restoration. If you are patient, finally you sing a new song in your finances. That's why in that job, Job 14, we read 7 to 13. Let's, let's now read it from 14, 14, 14, 14. Job 14, 14. Job 14, 14. You see it. If a man die, shall he live again? He said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. All the appointed days of my life, I will wait. Meaning, I will wait patiently till my change comes. May our sisters be able to wait. May the men be able to wait. So God told me, even if a fool does something patiently and consistently, he'll finally make it. And he told me, my son, you're not a fool. Go and do it patiently. <laughs> Ooh, that's why they go. They fight us, fight us, they think we have died. They disappear. When they come back, they find us driving more. Amen. <laughs> I never forget one young man who was a gospel singer. He used to be a part of us. He went, disappeared. At another time, we met somewhere in a function outside Nairobi. And he asked me, Bishop, are you? I told him I'm still there. More fiery than ever before. Because when you are patient and you are consistent, you, are enemy, you wear your enemies out. You are Satan. You can, you can frustrate the devil by patience. Patience alone is a discourager of the enemy. Because the enemy wants you to quickly decide. The enemy wants you to quickly do something against your own life. But you refuse. 
So you can frustrate Satan. You can turn him into a frustrated boy in town. I came to declare patience. Keep on coming every Thursday. Coming, coming. One year, two years, three years. For you will look at your life one day and shed tears of joy. But the problem, so many people, they are so impatient, especially in the age of microwave and, and instant coffee. Instant coffee. You know, in our day, there was nothing like instant coffee. It was kahawangoma. You, you boil it, you, can, you put it on jiko, and then you go outside to, to eat stories. <laughs> because by the time it removes a little bit of brown, it is already it is already 30 minutes yeah. but nowadays a little of it like this inside boil, boiled water then that coffee is ready i came to declare you will not be foolish in this generation yeah. in our days in our days it was in our days i saw another day there is a nunga that came beginning with ho very white in color that one you put in a sufuria ugali unga then you stir like this two, three times. It is ready for eating. In our days, it is unga nambane. <laughs> Even as you used to eat sometimes, you could, you could encounter a, a whole maze, a whole maze. <laughs> I know, I know, I know that you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That one, you, you don't, you don't stir like one, two, and then you say, bring the plates we eat. No, that one, you put it and wait. Because, because it is stubborn. May you go. Some of us grew patience through the experiences of life. As you are being brought up, we grew patience. Because such ugali is not the one that uh, you'll say, I'm hungry, I want to go and sleep. No, you wait. Even the sleep disappears. <laughs> Hallelujah. Receive patience. I say receive patience. I say receive patience. In, in Psalms 40 verse 1, the popular Psalm 40 verse 1, Psalm 40 verse 1. Are you enjoying this? Yes. Be patient. You frustrate your enemy by that. I waited. How? Patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And then what did he do? Because he heard my cry, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit. You know, because he inclined, he inclined unto my cry, what did he do? He restored Amen. my finances. <laughs> He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my finances. Amen. Can you see, without doing damage to the scripture, establish my finances. Amen. But it has to be waiting patiently. And uh, somebody said the other day, when you wait, do what waiters do, serve. <laughs> when you wait, for you not to be not to be impatient, do what waiters do. What do they do? Yes, Tell your neighbor, are you in any in service group? Ask them, what do you do in our church? <laughs> As you wait for that husband of your dreams, the man you dream about and your body shakes. Hey, Jehovah. That man that you see in your dreams, Rudumweni. That man will take you for honeymoon in Jamaica. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not kwa Michael. <laughs> that man who will not take you for holiday in Dubai, but Dubai, as you wait, keep on serving. Do what waiters do. What do they do? They serve. They serve. In verse, in verse, in verse, verse, verse three, and he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear. And shall trust in the Lord. Uh -huh. Then continue, continue. You, you know, your financial restoration will not be something hidden. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to. You know, liars and proud people are not never patient. That's why, as you wait upon the Lord, you be truthful. You will trust in whom, in Him and you will be restored. Amen. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 7, 8, and then we shall concentrate, Ecclesiastes 7, 8, we shall concentrate on B. Better is the end of a thing 
than the beginning thereof. Then B says, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So hear me. It shall end well because of your patience. That's why he says, better is the end of a thing. And what will make that ending better? What will make the ending better? Patience. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So waiting patiently makes your story end better. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, let them continue laughing. Let them continue mocking me. But I shall wait patiently until my change comes. There's a day called one day. There's a day called? You remember even in, in, our, in our stories in primary school, there's always one day. One day. You, you know, a story like this, for example, that uh, girls went to pick mangoes. And then they were found by a giant. And that giant took one girl called, you know, all the other girls had picked the ripe mangoes. But when Wajiro came out from the tree, <laughs> she found that she had picked and ripe mangoes. And she beseeched others to wait for her, but they said no. Who used to write those stories? <laughs> <laughs> they tormented us. <laughs> Amen. How, how many people remember a story like that? Amen. Amen. And then Wajiro climbed again the tree alone. But when she was speaking, she heard a voice. Who is on my tree? And then she was, she was told, calm down slowly. And she was given a choice. Whether you want to be eaten or to be carried in a basket. And she was taken into a giant's ogre's home. You remember? Yes. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor terrible stories. <laughs> but they would always say, well. Yes. Do you know? There will be a boy who is a giant killer in the village. Yes. <laughs> Wait patiently. Wait. <laughs> Wait patiently. Wait patiently. It shall be well because of your patience. It shall be well because of your patience. That's why better is the ending of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit, eh? what does it happen? Better than the proud in spirit. So patience, peace. Patience, peace. Number five called, as I conclude, minding and serving others. Minding and serving, minding the welfare of others and serving them. Minding. Now hear me. There were three friends who came to comfort Job. And instead of comforting Job, they were challenging him. Maybe you've wronged God. They were challenging him. So maybe you are evil. God is doing all this to you because you are wicked. But at a particular time, Job started praying for them. And when he started, he removed his eyes. He removed his eyes from his own calamity. That's why in the wilderness, Moses was told, anyone who is beaten by the serpent in the book of Numbers, let him remove his eyes from the serpent. Let him look at the brazen, brazen, bronze serpent that is lifted. You know, a typology of Jesus. And anyone who looked at, at the lifted snake, they are automatically healed. When you remove your eyes from your own challenges and you begin to mind others and serve others, God takes care of your own business. But we are living in a, very, in a generation of self-centered people. Egocentric people. People who are so self-centered. People who don't mind others. They are self-centered. They are egocentric. It is all about me, myself, and I. And can I tell you, especially in the kingdom business, you cannot serve God when you are self-centered. Because self-centered people are self-sparing. I've seen, I've seen, and I say this with the due respect to all men of God, but I've seen men of God who are so self-sparing. You know this thing, unless you carry the cross, you deny yourself and carry the cross, you may never be a success in ministry. You, for you to be, if you want to follow him, to serve him, you must deny yourself. Amen. That's why some of us serve like there is no service tomorrow. We do it like it is the only hour we have. Because the Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Do it with all your might. We don't do it half-heartedly. It is doing it with zeal. 
Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor zeal. Tell your neighbor the zeal of the Lord shall perform the work. I've seen men of God who are so self-sparing. Nothing. No, it's, it's like just one drama they are doing, you know, even the way the microphone is held because I don't want to expend energy. Amen. And checking myself all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. They cannot even shout because they believe shouting is and could. There are demons that cannot go until you shout. Amen. Do you know we, why we shout? Because the enemy we fight is half deaf. <laughs> Satan, if he was hearing, he would have had the longest time. Yes. He doesn't hear. <laughs> if he was hearing, he would have left your money longest time. That's why you must close yourself in your bedroom one night and declare any devil who oh, attacking my finances. You are a liar. Die. 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 You must shout. Amen. Amen. Not the devil. You <laughs> <laughs> about my finances for too long. Yeah. Wouldn't you go now? <laughs> that is not prayer. Yes. It is evil romance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So mind and serve others. Are you hearing? Mind and serve others. You know, the thing that made Satan, especially the story that is told in um, Isaiah 14, from verse 12 to 17, it was about a king in, in those days, but it is telling the story of Satan himself. 14 of Isaiah, 14 chapter. Are you blessed tonight? He says, how are thou fallen no the the one the one that tells about it in ezekiel 28 about a king and it is a typology of how satan fell this one is talking directly about lucifer how art thou fallen from heaven O lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations what happened for thou hast said in thine heart i will ascend into heaven how that the mark that is one eye and then I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. How many eyes? And then I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. How many? In the sides of the north. Verse 14 to 17. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. How many? And then I will be like the most high. How many? Five. In two verses, five I. If you want to know self-centered people, they talk like that. I used to have a friend um, in my college days, we, but uh, you know, someone I had known for long. Anytime we would do something together, when he's reporting, he said, I. But I said, Tulienda. Tukafanya, Nilienda. One time I asked him, Was I not there? <laughs> and can I tell you, it has not helped him in his life. It has not helped his life. It has not helped his life. Ever since those days that you are in Moy. It has not helped him. Because so I'll show you seven marks of a self-centered person. I'll show you seven marks. So that you see, such a person cannot enjoy restoration anywhere. So he said, I, I, in two verses. Five of them. Let he say, then he said, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. So, because self-centeredness attracts demotion. Are you hearing me? Self-centeredness. What does it attract? Demotion. Then, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And consider thee. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? Is this the man? Because he's too small. He's demoted already. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoner. You understand? Self-centeredness costed him. Lucifer, he was a mighty leader of worship in heaven. But when you become so self-centered, you know, checking, looking at your own interest. The parable is told of a good, of a good neighbor in Luke 10, 30 to 37. Good neighbor. 
And remember the law of the Lord. Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And love yourself, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. amen. That is the conclusion of law and prophets. Say amen. amen. So avoid that. There are seven. So Job forgot about himself in Job 42. Let us see his restoration story now. As we begin to wind up. Let us see his restoration story. Job 42, 10 to 17. Then I'll show you the marks of a self-centered person. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, immediately he, he forgot about his calamity. He, his, his restoration was ensured. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Continue in a hurry. Then came there unto him on his all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. So do, do you see, the minute he has removed his eyes from his own calamity, it, magni it started calling helpers. Amen. Somebody here will attract helpers after this service. Amen. Do you see, brethren, sisters, all his friends, they are the ones called acquaintances before. And did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him. And comforted him over all the evil that the Lord God, that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him. What, what did every man give him? Read there louder. Uh, what did the, so that you see it is financial restoration. Can you read louder? Every man. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And every man an earth of gold. Your gold and money is coming. Continue. Continue. Then came, eh? so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep. Can you see? Yes. That is textile industry. Back now. Restored. Uh -huh. And 6,000 camels. Can you see? Yes. Transport. Amen. These are trailers. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. And a thousand yoke of oxen. Can you see agriculture? Yes. And a thousand she asses. Can you see also transport? Yes. And then he had also seven sons and three seven sons and three daughters. There is something there. Uh -huh. Then verse 14. And he called the name of the first Jemima. And the name of the second Kezia. And the name of the third Keren Hapuch. Jesus Christ. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And your father gave them inheritance among the, your brethren. Continue. We finish. After this lived Job 140 years and so his sons and his sons sons even four generations. Can you see restoration power? So Job died being old and full of days and money. Amen. Full of gold. Did you see? Did you see they brought him money and gold that is the restoration super restoration story can you see the story of job how it has ended it shall be the same in your life Amen. i say you are a superhero it will end in a superhero way Amen. seven marks of a self-centered man person number one they are mean so meanness comes from nothing else it's self-centeredness number two they are stingy they are stingy. The same almost appear like the same, but they are not the same. Number three, uncaring. They don't care. I love what my young daughter tells me. She tells me, sharing is caring. So the other day I was joking, I was joining the words in a, in a, in a distorting way. I said, sharing is scaring. <laughs> so to the, to the self-centered, sharing is not caring. It is scaring. <laughs> So they are stingy, they are uncaring, they are envious. They are envious. They carry envy. They are jealous. They are malicious, number six. Malicious. And finally, covetous. Anything they see, they want it for themselves. They can never acknowledge that people can have things that they, they can't have. They, anything, they see you in nice hair as a lady, they want it. They see you drive a car, they want it. That's why finally, self-centered people amass wealth that does not help them. Especially our politicians. They amass wealth that, that does not help them. You hear those who are stealing billions are the billionaires. 
I thought that uh, the millionaires should be the ones stealing billions to become billionaires. But nowadays you hear billionaires stealing billions. You wonder what he wants to become. You are delivered. Amen. I say you too, you are delivered. Amen. I say you are delivered. Amen. Stand up on your feet. Bye bye CTN. This is Victor's Assembly Church as usual. This is the impact hour. God bless you. See you in church tomorrow. Even as we welcome the new month of March. And the Lord God will bless you. We are in Kikuyu. Opposite St. Teresa Hospital. That is where victims are being turned into victors. God bless you. And may you remember that your story will never end the same. You are the superhero in the movie of your life. And just like the story of Job ends well. Your story too will end well. In the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.